you look like a beautiful nightmare Don't you know? Hey y'all, um, I'm already done the wig but I wanted to come This is will be at the beginning of the video Just so you guys know, anything that I'm using today I'm going to make sure it's linked in my Amazon store Check out my Amazon store for wigs and everything like that Everything will be there, all the tools that I use And let's get in the Real Housewives of Atlanta My love welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me again i am back with another wig review we are talking all things real housewives of atlanta season 14 episode 10 i think i'm right about that and we're doing a review or i guess we're going to be getting our uh beauty here this is from outre everywhere this is number 17 and i have her in the color number 1b and we just going to zig into what is going on on Real Housewives of Atlanta. So let me show you this box card. So this was an interesting episode because it didn't feel like much actually happened here. But I feel like we got a little bit more clarity about the Marlo situation. So this uh, particular episode opens up with Marlo, excuse me, with Candy and Kenya at the I guess it's like a kid's play zone, which I thought was super cute that they were able to get their daughters together. Like, I love stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, kids hanging. You should be able to still be go out, be a mommy, hang out with your girlfriends, do your thing. You know what I mean? While still, you know, taking care of your kids. Like, it shouldn't stop you from doing anything. And I thought it was really cool that her and Kenzie had the opportunity to sit down and do that. So... At that particular place, you could tell that Kenya is like really a good mother, and it's really nice to watch. As is Candy, but you could tell Kenya is like not playing with Miss. Um, what's her baby name? Child, I forget that baby name. Brooklyn. She is not playing with Brooklyn, okay? Because when Brooklyn said, "May I have some popcorn?" I said, "That's right, sis. Get it together." get it together we don't have no time for the babies to be disrespectful so we don't have time for that so it was really good to see them all together or whatever the case may be now we are really coming in on them getting ready to go on their blue ridge trip and a couple things kind of stood out to me if i'm being honest one of which is so yeah so then we go on to marlo marlo is at the house with her sister we meet her sister finally which it was to me like a pleasant surprise to meet her sister like i thought that you know, us being able to get an idea of who Marlo is, I think is really important because we actually have had Marlo on TV for several seasons. You know what I mean? But do we even really know Marlo though? Like really know her? So to see somebody who has known her and grown up with her, it was nice to get an idea from her sister about, you know, what she's capable of. Now, we find out that Marlo was once helped raise her sister and had to put her sister out so hmm i don't know so let me say this this whole situation with the boys i don't like i don't like i don't even like talking about it high key because i think it's kind of like messed up the situation that they're in and that's the truth i think it's i think that you know children are so vulnerable and it's funny because i'm kind i don't want to say i'm dealing with something similar because it's not super similar um because my niece is grown but full disclosure, I feel that I, I, I get this. I get this. And, but, you know, she, ooh, I, I'm about to, ooh, I don't want to talk about business. I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to shut my mouth because I don't want nobody to hit my line. Like, you tell my business. But what I'm saying is you do, it's hard not to feel a responsibility to people who have your blood. It's hard not to feel that way. And if you have the resources and the means, you should want to provide for them. What I find is I though, and this is like keeping it 100, and this is like me being as sweet and polite as I can be to say, I do think that Marlo suffers from some kind of like, and not that everybody suffers from like a mental health thing, but you know, it's more common than we kind of let on. And I think Marlo got a little bit more of it than she trying to say she got. Hello? Did you pick me what I'm putting in? Because when the sister said, well, you put me out too, ain't no way. Me and my sister would have to be fist fighting in the Miami Tatum streets for me to put my sister out. It ain't on God's green earth. It ain't a way. It ain't a way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not my sisters. Neither one. And it's so funny because we've had so many instances and people will be like, no, you never know what you're going to do. Like, I know certain things. Like... It's so funny. We have had, like, our family have had, like, certain kind of, like, you know how black fam, you know how fam, I ain't gonna reduce it to black people. You know how families are. It's always some BS, right? 
And we've had some recently, and, and, and I think it might have even been my dad who said to me, well, you don't know what your, you and your sister is going to go through. When y'all get older, mind you, we big grown, good grown, huge grown women now. I said, we're not going to go through any of this. A lot of y'all issues, like, like y'all be doing too much. You know what I mean? And I do think, unfortunately, black people have this, not even, I don't want to reduce it to us. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't know how to problem solve. There's that. People, not just black people. People. So, you know, and then that, then you have to, like, figure out how to, like, work with people or speak to them the way that they want to be spoken to. Everything like that. And I feel like Marlo said something that I thought was so poignant. She said one of the worst things or worst traits she feels like she's gotten from her mother is her mouth. And we all know what's very clear, excuse me, guys, what's very clear that Marlo's mouth is out of control. It's out of control. I don't know how anybody can, and I don't want to say it like that, like, I don't know how anybody can deal with that. Like, girl, shut up. I'm saying it like as a girlfriend. You know what I mean? Speak any way you want to these men. But as a girlfriend, as a family member, I do think she could be a little bit crass. And when the when the sister see, she said, well, do you think I'm wrong? So wait a minute. We find out that Marlo's sister is a two-bedroom. She said now it's a three-bedroom, but I don't know if I believe that. But a two-bedroom house, she already has four kids. This would bring her total kid count to six. Now, to me, that says a lot about Marla. That says a lot about her. It's no way, and I mean that with all due respect, with love and happiness, and I wish her all the best. It's no way my sister got four babies, and I'm trying to saddle her with two younger. They not even like, and I don't want to say saddle like that, y'all. I'm trying to pick my words because these is babies. The problem I have with it is that, because I have kind of done something very similar to my older sister um like kind of encourage her to take somebody in um you know what i mean but we were talking about like somebody of like college age like somebody who's going to school and just need to be there temporarily kind of thing these are young men who really do need some stability because you don't want them to be influenced by somebody else you know what i mean and i just feel like the way merlo is handling this is just like it really it really shows you why the universe doesn't provide people, certain people with children. Certain people ain't supposed to have them. And I, and, and I mean that with all due respect. Because I think that like, it's no way I make a decision like that. And them boys could have got me on my goddamn nerves. But if they my sister kids, I'm going to take care of her kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't give a, I'll get over it. That, what I'm feeling is temporary. You feel, you're picking up what I'm putting down? But what they going through might affect them for the rest of their lives and i don't think she understands the gravity of that and i don't think she's ever had to and uh, to no fault of her own she's a young woman you know what i mean but that shit makes a difference it makes a difference like you shouldn't I, it, it makes a difference i'm not and she really gotta go ahead to check that and for her sister to say you gotta be real conscious of what you're saying in front of them like to say like i don't need to take care of y'all i don't need to do this that is me. It's almost mean spirit. But I'm not mad at Marlo. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Marlo didn't get that. Marlo got that from her mama. Marlo didn't make that up. That ain't brand new for Marlo. Marlo got that from her mama. You know what I mean? And sometimes we don't. This is why like. People are changing up the way they are. Kids are parented nowadays. Because of shit like that. You should have said. I'm certain that Marlo has heard something very similar. Just so y'all know, this is what I'm using. I'm sure Marlo has heard very, something very similar to that language from her own goddamn mama. Or her uncle or her daddy or whomever. She's heard it before. You know what I mean? So when she's saying it, she don't even know. I really do believe she don't even know it's wrong to say. I, I honestly believe that. But she wanted to get that shit together because to drop all them boys, to drop them boys off in the house with four other mother jumper kids. Okay, she's a mother. She got to take care of her own kids. She's getting up and going to work. And I can't. I just can't. And then you're going to say, well, am I wrong? Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like, hell yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't know. So, that's how I feel about it. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to give Marlo too much because Kenya already did that for us. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Kenya already gave Marlo the business. I'm just here to be, I'm just here to reiterate what the hell happened on yesterday's episode, okay? So they're on their way to Blue Ridge. Marlo gets her in Sharia car, and then she gets uh, Monetta, 
uh whom i'm kind of feeling right now i'm kind of feeling Mignetta, and i hope this is like a screen test because i really think she could fit here candy and me and candy got a button relationship too and drew raggedy ass still not on her something about her, and i think drew is a stunning woman i'm gonna tell you i thought she looked beautiful but i still think she ain't no good and i don't give a damn what nobody said so they are on their way to blue ridge let me tell you what i didn't like anybody who know me know i'm a luxury vehicle queen well not queen i drive a, a jeep so I'm, I'm not giving too much but when i mean a luxury vehicle queen like if i'm going out we're getting a black car i want to reserve a car like i'm one of those okay she me her that's who i am so when they were going out and you didn't first of all the fact that you didn't get them these are three women don't get me no small ass aston martin just like i i got money so i don't need to be in an aston martin i own an aston martin if you want to help me out you could have got us a party bus from where we was at all the way up there or furthermore you could have got us a goddamn suv Get us a Suburban. Put us in something we can spread out. Why Drew gotta be sitting all up in the front in the woman's face and everything? I like that. I ain't like that. And I didn't think that was giving what I think Marlo wanted to give at the time. Like, I just didn't. I thought it was like, girl, this ain't what you meant. This ain't what you meant when you said fabulous. Fab you, that might have been that F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S, but not that F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you making it's gonna it's giving faux fab? Are you giving me like because to me you're in the roles, which is fine, don't get me wrong, but y'all could have just it just seemed like a waste of money. Are you and then for the bitch to say, don't eat my car? What kind of car service is this? Don't get me an Uber somewhere and then <laughs> So you got me a Uber? <laughs> But not only that, like, granted, this is this woman's car, but you definitely got an Uber when the realty is that you could have just got, you could have just got a car service. There are car services out there. And if y'all was really popping like that, for real, for real, for real, for real, I'm about to take it a step further. Don't sign it and her man got a car service. Or is he one of the drivers? And don't get me wrong, I love signing your man. I think he dope. And I ain't even mad at him for driving. He's a retired NFL player. But y'all picking up what I'm putting down. It's a, I know y'all know somebody with some cars because that was crazy. You can't eat in my car. I would have made the bitch wait an hour too. That shit really pissed me off. And then sometimes I be feeling like people be saying shit just so they can have a little moment. Is it me? Or do y'all think she really ain't want y'all to eat and her raggedy ass Aston Martin? If you so much of a luxury car driver, why you ain't? I would be, you know, I got a dust buster. This is not even a joke. That's wireless. You could just mm, hit it up. And then when you get these luxury vehicles, what they don't tell you is that you get all kinds of little things to keep your car, like the leather, like all that shit, to make sure that if you, between details, it still looks good. So the whole thing to me was giving, you shouldn't drive an Aston Martin if you can't afford an Aston Martin or afford to detail it. And that's it. And that's all. And I know y'all like, that's how I'm going. She know what she want. I don't give a damn. I think it's tacky. I think it's tacky. What are you driving a, a luxury vehicle for then, sis? It's weird. So, <laughs> they get there. Okay, and they pick their rooms. But they pick their rooms based on candle names. Okay? And I didn't love this game. I didn't love this game. I thought it was um, corny. That's my truth. I thought it was fucking corny. And I thought that she could do better. I, I really thought that Marlo, but the house was fly as hell, Marlo girl. And when they showed up, they had food. And to me, that's all that matters. If you're planning a trip, these are the things that matter. You know what I mean? We want to come on a trip. We want to be uh, greeted by the people who own a home. I want it to be a charcuterie, a hoochie coochie board waiting for us. That's what we want. You know what I mean? So I was picking that up. And that's where, to me, the luxury comes from. Like, put us all on a school bus. Get us where we got to be. <laughs> and then we can get luxurious when we get there. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it, what she wanted it to give was not what it was giving. So, yeah, that's good. So, they go to the house. They pick their rooms. I didn't love how they... I just didn't love the game. They have played so many other games better than that. But you know who's good at that? Candy Yams. I'm going to give Candy her credit when her credit is due, honey. And I feel like she's a much... Oh, yeah, that's cute. That's her. She's very, very, very good at that. So, 
They go from there and the piece de resistance to this episode is them at the restaurant. They're in Blue Ridge, they're at the restaurant. Kenya and Sonya are not yet there. So Drew still has an issue with Sonya after she said that shady ass shit about them having, um, you know, whether or not Drew and her husband Ralph had stuff going on or whatever. Like, do y'all even, are y'all even that busy? I thought it was very shady. And the more I think about it, I still think it was shady. But I think in Sonya's defense, because the difference between Sonya and Drew is that they both get on my goddamn nerves. Like, let's be very clear. The biggest difference is that Sonya has redeeming qualities. Okay? Like, I know that Sonya is a good friend. I'm not certain about that with Drew. I'm not certain. Drew, to me, is always giving pick me. She's always... Drew is trying to be a star where she isn't one, which is also giving the game. You know what I mean? Like, you're really not a star. I just say I'm so bad. I want to like Drew, but I just cannot. I find her to be... She got an agenda, and it's not... I don't like it. I don't like it. I just think it's very... First of all, it's very clear that she has an agenda, and I think that's whack. But it's also like talking about people who don't know how to be friends. Drew just strikes me as confrontational for no reason. I really don't think it's any reason. It's a bad thing to be confrontational. But people who want to be confrontational and then don't want you to defend yourself are terrible human beings. They're gaslighters. And then they put you in situations where you need to defend yourself. And then when you start to do so, they're like, well, where did you get this from? Why would you do that? What do you mean? Nobody was even like that. Like, I, I can't. I just can't. I find it to be terrible. And she is terrible. But her and Sonya still arguing about the same damn thing because both of them need something to talk about. Now, when Sonya came to the dinner and was like all hype about her trip to Jamaica. Then y'all think that like Sonya, this is not the time of the place. And I'm certain the producers told her a little hype ass. Just wait a minute. You know what I mean? And I know she's excited to be on uh Real Housewives of Atlanta because it really is like a like it really is something that could like set you up for life. I do believe that. Like I believe it could change the status of your business. We've seen many people develop several platforms from this, everything. So I get where she's coming from. I just also feel like you're doing the most. You're doing the most and you're coming in a little too hot. And I just want her to slow up and, you know, be a little bit more, what's the word I want to use? Demure maybe? Not demure because we want to see her and we want her to have moments. It's just more like... She's really giving extra to me, and I don't know why. And it's giving thirsty. It's giving thirsty, and I just want her to relax and get a little, you know, pee light. She seems very dehydrated, and I feel like that's the only thing going to work. Her and Drew, they both need it. So she tells the girl that they're going on a Jamaica trip. It really did not give the, the excitement that she wanted it to give. But on the other hand, let me say this. This is a great opportunity. She's absolutely right. Let me give my girlfriend some props because I'm a good girlfriend too, Sonya. I'm proud that she's able to be in a position where she could provide that kind of vacation and everything for her friends. That's a big deal. So that is something for her to be excited about. I just thought the timing wasn't great. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So she does that. I think we need to thin this out a bit more in here because I'm not, if I zhuzh it, I don't love it. And then when I don't zhuzh it, I don't love it. Kenya comes, Kenya shows up, she's telling Candy, oh, is anybody looking for me? Anybody asking about me? Kenya can't possibly think we give a fuck about her that much. <laughs> she possibly, when they said, can you want to come? And I said, oh, okay, and moved on with my day. I don't have no time. Like, girl, you couldn't have thought these mother jumpers gave a damn that you wasn't coming, sweetie poo. You couldn't have thought that. And not even in a bad way, but just like... Girl, we got we got we going to get these scenes filmed whether you here or not. And we know you're not about to miss no check cuz she's smarter than it. Oh, one thing that I missed that I love the conversation about was Kenya and Candy I'm all over the place. Was Kenya and Candy talking about business? I'm not gonna lie y'all, I really fuck with it. Because one people have issues with business and you should feel free to come ask your friends who are successful as a be have them be a resource for you. You know what I mean? And the fact that Candy was able to do that for Kenya, I thought was too. 
But I thought for Kenya to ask, oh, well, is anybody asking about me? Girl, is you coming or no? Like, sit down. You do know we're going on this trip whether you're here or not, right? These producers do not give a fuck. We're already here. But then when Candy said, well, when I saw, you know, she said, we got the same hair and makeup people. Like, girl, we been knew you was going to be there. It just wasn't given what I think she wanted it to give. But when mama sat down at the table and got Miss Marlo Thine Hampton together, child. But she did it as if she had been thinking about this for ages. When she said, you are not a nice person, you don't know what love is, you don't know how to give love. Do y'all know how sad that was? <laughs> That shit was sad, like, because that sounds so, imagine a life where you aren't able to reciprocate love with people. Imagine it. It's, oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. That sounds so sad to me. And I feel like that's what Kenya was saying. Like, you are sorry. You are sad. And I felt like I was very proud of Kenya because she said it in a way that was quick. She, Kenya wrote those words down. Let me tell y'all what Kenya did. Kenya was like, before I even get to this bitch, she was in the bathroom. She was handling her business like women do. She's sitting there and she said, let me write this out. She pulls her journal from the side of her, you know what I mean, throne. And <laughs> she sits there and she writes a note to herself. And she says, these are the exact words I'm saying to Marla. Throughout the week, she memorized those words. That felt like a monologue. Were we watching Scandal? Like, it was too good. Mwah, mwah. Oh, it was too good. She got it right together. She got it right together. She said, in case you ever wondered how I felt about you, bitch, I don't even think you're capable of loving people. I don't think you know what love is. You're not a lover. You're mean. You're nasty. You have no friends. Goodbye. I was like, and then it got me to thinking, has Kenya felt this way about other people in the past? Because this is the first time I've seen Kenya with such a visceral, um, what's the word? Not response, but a visceral, but with such a, uh, it was, it's a particular response. I feel like, you know what I mean? Like for people, when you're in an argument, I've seen her argue with Kenya. I, I mean, excuse me, I've seen her argue with Porsche. I've seen her argue with Nini, but I've never seen her say these types of things. So it's, it was really fascinating to like look at. It was really fascinating to watch because as much as I'm not, I'm just becoming friends with Kenya, okay? I was kind of proud of her. It was very classy. I felt, I didn't think that she was over the top with it. I thought that she gave just enough. Like, look, this is how I feel about you. I'm not really fucking with you like that. Oh, sorry y'all about my language. She said, I'm not really banging with you like that. You know what I mean? But I don't think you're a good person. And period. I think you're a terrible human being. <laughs> and nobody loves you. And it's not my fault nobody loves you. You know what I mean? I just don't love the direction Marlo is going. And I think her idea was that she was going to unseat a throne when she became a housewife of Atlanta. So she's been coming at Candy. She's been coming at Kenya. When I think her approach should have been, I'm trying to be a party. Not even like a party girl. I don't want to say it like that. But like, I'm trying to be a girl's girl. So I'm hanging out with everybody. We having a good time. Because I love to watch her relationship. with. I love to watch her relationship with Sherratt. So it's like, you know, and how much fun they have. And how they giggle and everything like that. So I think that that's the approach she should have came with. Because I also believe that her trying to be this mean girl ain't her. So it's like, you already... When she said, I have attention issues. She said, we know that Kenya has attention issues. Which is the truth. It's like, if you know these things, you shouldn't have led with that. Like, you don't, I have real issues with people who try to walk into a room and try to, like, make it like, oh, this is my room. Not, you can't do that with me. <laughs> it really burns me up, though. Like, because I get you, who is you? Who is you? We've been doing this. You won't, You just got here. Sit the f down and take notes. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you've been on the show, but you have not been a full peach of the show. So, respectfully... Your it changes. It, it it really does change the game, and I don't know if she sees it that way. I don't know if she sees it that way, but she should, and she really should have thought about her approach. Because I don't feel like the approach she's taking is beneficial to her. That's all I'm saying. I just don't feel like it's beneficial. I feel like it's it's causing her more harm than it is. Uh, than it's not. 
and that's my truth i feel like there was a better way yeah i need to do it like this so i'm just gonna pull this out there was a better way for her to handle it and i just don't know if she knew that and i feel like marlo is missing an opportunity because she really could be that girl like you know what i mean like so many of us is like around the way girls who have like maybe not me but you know what i mean like so many girls are have a similar story to marlo why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to showcase that does that make sense why wouldn't you want to show like yeah we are runaway girls we home girls i could be a home girl this is what it's like when people women love and fellowship and hang with each other you know what i mean it don't gotta be mean and cantankerous and we don't have to be curmudgeons you know what i mean like and i think that she is really it's just not given and i'm a bit disappointed in the trajectory that marlo has decided to take him and that's my baby tip and truth because i feel like she could do she could do better than this and we expect better from her i love the texture of this this is really beautiful i'm not too keen on the actual style i feel like it's a bit disjointed but i also kind of get it so i'm in a weird space with this one but when the best part of this episode like i said is can you get marlo together because in case a bitch forgot i'm here i'm the one and not the two she said try jesus don't try me <laughs> She said, I don't give a fuck where Brooklyn at. I don't know where Brooklyn at. Y'all don't need to be worried about that because I'm I'm here now. That's what Kenya said. And I felt every bit of that. But when she went, Marlo told her, don't come to nothing else if you're not going to stay at the house. I thought that was like, people really be trying to control shit. And that's the issue that Kenya has with Marlo. And I'm like, like I tell y'all all the time, I'm a girls, girls. I don't like mean women. I don't like, when I mean mean women, be mean to men all day. Who cares about that? When I mean mean women, I mean mean to each other. Like, I feel like uh we give we let man dog aside we give men so many chances whatever the case may be you could turn around and, and talk to your girlfriend about a problem or whatever but marlo has obviously crossed the line with kenya she could never come back from and i am fascinated about how this is going to unfold for the rest of the season because it really this episode didn't give much but it it, it laid some bricks it laid some bricks okay so let me know what y'all thinking we got her together okay let me know how y'all felt about the episode i felt like it was a filler episode like let's be clear i did chop this up a bit though guys just so y'all know and that's just because i just needed it to frame my face you know what i mean like a little bit of that <laughs> turn around she's giving a little thin oh no she's not she's a natural um density i wanted to make sure the check doesn't show in. but yeah let me know what you guys are thinking about this one. Um, I'm going to go grab me a coffee because I'm really in the mood for that. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think we did all right, y'all. Let me know how y'all feel about this one. Let me know what y'all thought about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Would you have gotten Kenya? Would you have gotten Marlo together like that? I mean, got her together. Child. that's how i talk to people when i'm mad too because i want you to know i want to be clear i want to be concise because when you say i'm not fucking with you i want you to have the one the two the three the four all the resources the wikipedia link everything as the one i'm not fucking with you and i appreciated that kenya so shout out to kenya for reading a bitch damn to her socks girl she was asshole naked when kenya was dying but marlo let's try to be a better friend hmm. so if you have not already bust down subscribe to this channel this was a good episode and i'll see you beautiful mother jumpers later bye